Welcome to Anime Out of Context, a comedy review show where a man completely immersed in anime culture torments his co-host, who is only allowed to watch the shows featured here. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash animeoutofcontext. Alongside over 100 hours of exclusive bonus material, all episodes uploaded to Patreon are completely ad-free, even to non-patrons. Thank you for listening, and enjoy. Hello and welcome to Anime Out of Context, the show where I attempt to explain the sometimes weird, sometimes wonderful, but always hilarious world of anime. And boy, oh boy, my <laughs> is full. <laughs> I'm Sean Rollins. I'm Remington Chase. <laughs> wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't be the first time, Rem. Uh, Remington, Remington, uh, I got a question for you. Uh, I have an answer for you. Uh, do you remember anything at all about... Uh, Higurashi when they cry. <laughs> no, no. Do you remember? Do you remember what genre it was at all? Ah, uh, I wish I did. Basic premise. Not in the least. I cannot mm. picture a single thing. <laughs> yeah, that that tracks. I mean, we we talked about it back in I think 2020, maybe. Holy it was shit. one of our Halloween episodes. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, uh, and it was uh, it's old old school visual novel anime adaptation. Uh, about a, uh, a town, about, you know, a guy coming to, a guy from the city coming to a small town, and lots of fucked shit happens, including, like, cults, possession, uh, murder, and it has a bunch of different timelines, depending on, like, the different routes and resets and things of that nature. Uh, you didn't have the strongest opinion, but we did only watch, I think, maybe four episodes of it at the time. Uh... The reason I'm asking you about this, Rem, is because uh, that's not what we're watching today. <laughs> okay, yeah, of course, of course. Okay, uh, but what if I was to tell you that we were going to take the premise of a city slicker coming to a small town and, you know, uh, meeting the people there and interacting with the characters all in one small class uh, and learning about the small countryside town that they're in, uh, just with none of the horror elements and none of the uh, none of the dark tones or themes i'm a level with you sounds like a pretty generic ass anime that i've seen many times well remington <laughs> why why uh well because we have somebody asking for it rem Fuck it a lot of people asking for it uh oh, so this week ren really? we are going to be watching non non biori <laughs> shout out shout out to rick Uvico, who has finally been able to bribe you Look, I I don't want it to seem like I'm being bribed. I really, really fucking don't. But the guilt, man. <laughs> the guilt of seeing more than one account in that highest tier. Uh, all right, okay. Um, you're... It, it, look, it's not being sold well to me. <laughs> look, let me, give you, let me give you the straight cut of it, all right? Oh, fuck. Nanan non Biori, it's, uh, it's a story about our main character, uh, Hotoro Ichijo. Okay. And uh, she's a city girl. She uh, lives in Tokyo, and uh, her and her family have recently moved out to the Asahigaoka village. And it's a super duper small town, and her new school only has five students in it, uh, and they all share the same classroom, even though they're all, most of them are in different grades from each other. Uh, that's how kind of small town we're talking here. Uh, okay. Same kind of thing. So, in city girl, rural school. Uh, you adjust, you learn about it, you make friends along the way. Oh, mm -hmm. I have to get used to this different kind of lifestyle, etc., etc. <laughs> I can't... Yep. I, <laughs> Sean, I need there to be a twist. I need there to be something more. I mean, Don't Rem. do this to me. Don't, I understand that it's been asked for. I get it. <laughs> right like, now, we have financial incentive in it, unfortunately, Ren. Like, that's just the that's just the nature of the beast. It sounds you know? like the single most generic thing you've ever described. And I've had too much of that. I've had too much of that lately. Look at the past fucking month. Other than fucking Shikanoko, I've been given sawdust slop that's the same old, same old everything. And I'm, I'm losing it, Sean. It got three full seasons, Ren. That doesn't so mean be more anything. <laughs> doesn't mean... Okay, all right. I just gotta believe. I gotta believe. Our lovely yeah, patron I... wouldn't lead me astray. They wouldn't do me wrong, would they? I mean, it's a cute little slice of life. That's that's what we've got going on. You know? Okay, even though that's a generic premise, if it has enough charm, good enough characters, 
If, if it, it, it can make it work. It doesn't need to be complicated. It, it just needs desperately to have those fundamentals down. And a lot of people think that this does. The only reason I'm not selling it super well, Rem, is because it's one of those shows that's hard to sell. Like, you, it's one of those shows that on the outset, you kind of have a general idea if it might be for you or not, right? I mean, it's, a, it's just a little slice of life show about some, some kids in the countryside being silly, you know? Uh-huh. Like, I don't know what you, I, I don't know what more I can say about it, Rem. <laughs> like, I, it, it's very popular. Got three seasons, uh, originally aired in 2013, uh, and its most recent season, I believe, was 2021. Uh, it's got a lot of uh, meme potential, a <laughs> lot, uh, lot of people use it as reaction gifts. Uh, Nyan Pasu, you've heard of Nyan Pasu, I'm sure. I, I think so. Yeah, Nyan Pasu, you know, that, that's, that's what, it's from this, you know, like, well, the, the joke is, uh, Ram... The, there's the re- main reason I haven't done an episode on this was because my job's hard with this one because it's so straightforward. <laughs> like, there's not much. Like, it, it is quite se- essentially like the setting of Higarashi, but with but rather than horrific, horrible uh, nightmare yandere stuff, uh, it's slice of life wholesome stuff with little goofs here and there. I, I'll be honest. Usually, I want to go the opposite direction. Usually, it's like you take. Uh, take take an anime that I found kind of generic and plain, and then you're like, here, let's add some fucked horror to it. Yeah, no, I, and hey, that's what I prefer too, usually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you know, we'll come back to Garashi at some point, and you know, Why? watch more of it. Why? Uh, so you know, so you can actually get that uh, because people are still upset with us over our Higarashi episode. I go figure. Um, but you know, the hey, Ram. Rem, a lot of people really want you to watch the show because they think you'll genuinely love and appreciate it. Like, th- this is like the, this is an olive branch from the weebs, Rem. All right. I'm, I'm hopeful that that works out and is true. Um, I, I, I'm just, I, I'm more wary because, you know, I've been dealing with a lot of bad generic bullshit lately. And, and so I... I, I want some spice and seasoning. I'll take, if this ends up working out, hey, I'll take some cute fundamentals that just work out and are great. I'll, I'll still take it. I'll be happy. I'll be pleased. Um, but man. <laughs> well, hey, I'm going to tell you right now, next week's anime, which I already have prepared, uh, is going to be nothing like this one. I'll tell you that much. Because <laughs> I had to, I had to really switch gears when it came to planning the next couple of weeks because of how much of, uh, We've we've covered so far. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Uh, whether or not that's good or bad for you, well, we'll have to see. Yeah, I mean, I'm perpetually frightened, so. Yeah, as you should be. Uh, but I think that's really all that needs to be said, Rem. Like, there's not much I can do. And for those who are like, you didn't sell it good enough. Tell me how I could have sold this more. Oh, they will. They will. And I'm going to tell them that won't have changed anything. <laughs> like, like, oh, you didn't emphasize how cute uh, Renge is. And I'm like, yeah. The show will do that for me, dog. You know, like, <laughs> it's a comedy slice of life show. Like it's it's wholesome. It's relaxing. What what more could you want? All right. What more could you want? All right. So without further ado, let's go straight into it. Let's go watch some non non biori. And we are back after watching four whole episodes of the highly requested anime. Non non biori and Remington, tell me, is this the show that's going to give you the urge to move out to a countryside and enjoy an idyllic life alone, or are you uh, about to piss off a lot of people who truly love and beloved this show? <laughs> I mean, the the question on everybody's mind is, is this going to be Silver Spoon Part Two, basically? Yes, right? yes. Um, because <laughs> you know. That episode angered a lot of people, a lot of people who are usually on my side. And, and so this one, obviously, there's a lot of overlap. Yes. Here. And, and so I, I was concerned, and I will say, boy, I was taken on a, a journey through, throughout this watching experience. Mm-hmm. We, we open up with episode one, right? And we see tranquil nature, uh, and, and we actually get a lot of shots of just vibing around town before we properly begin. 
Uh, and I, I actually appreciate this. It's a very, like, forceful slowdown. I can be annoyed when things are inefficiently paced and they're just not fucking doing anything, right? The difference is when they're all but looking the audience in the eye and saying, hey, motherfucker, slow the fuck down, chill out. That's the vibe. It's, it's an anti-hook of the show in a fascinating way because I think most things would be afraid to start out this chill and this slow. And I can admire that it, it sets the tone right away. Uh, that being said, I do think that there, there's going to be two types of people, Sean. Okay. There are going to be people who think, okay, yeah, episode one is pretty boring, but don't worry, it gets better. There's going to be those kinds of people. I'm not those kinds of people. Uh-oh. I think episode one uh, captures this the vibe perfectly of just being out in nature being pretty relaxed um, and, and just having that, that setting, setting the atmosphere and tone very strongly. Um, albeit with, you know, a bit of an overuse of whatever instrument and tune they do a little bit overused, especially in episode one, but, but still to be fair, it was uh 2013 when this came out. So, you know, from a, <laughs> from a smaller studio. Yeah, but still, uh, great vibes. In fact, like, the vibes of episode one, they're kind of what I want the vibes of a lot more Ghibli movies to be more consistently, where it's just focused on nature and little bits focused on people, uh, and nothing is that important or a big deal. It was lovely. It's actually, we, we get to meet, uh, uh, the, the main characters. There's not a ton of even character development in episode one. There's enough. We meet. Uh, Tanuki named Goo. He's great. He, he does. <laughs> you, he you're does introducing a trick. the Tanuki before you introduce <laughs> any of the actual human characters. <laughs> he, he does. They they're like, oh, he can do a trick, and then he does the trick of existing, and that is that's the greatest trick that he can do. Uh, uh, I love I love Goo. <laughs> I see, I see. Okay, we we understand where your priorities lie. Well, I mean, of course. Uh, but also, it, it's not like episode one, to put it a weird way, episode one doesn't care a ton about the characters. Uh, it develops them a little bit, but it's mostly just, it's it's atmosphere, right? It's just, hey, meet these characters. It's your first day, you're not going to get to know them deeply, you're just meeting them, and that's it. Uh, and then a little, like, Fish out of water scenarios, pretty light stuff. The the small one, Ren, wondering if they live in the country, and some of them being in denial about that, but obviously they they very much do. Hmm. Uh, yeah, episode one, love the vibes. Uh, all right, now we take a turn. Sean. Okay, all right, yep, here it comes. Because <laughs> at the end of episode one, I was like, hell yes, it's super slow. Um, and to make a weird comparison, I had actually seen a movie. With similar vibes, Sean, mm -hmm. uh, recently. And it's a newer movie. Um, it's a horror movie. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, it, it's called In a Violent Nature. Um, hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I'm being completely genuine. Very similar vibes. <laughs> Just in this, like, forceful slowdown, as well as beautiful nature. Hey, man. <laughs> it's not the comparison I thought I'd make, but it's the comparison I'm making. If you want... Slow down nature vibes, but also slasher. Check out In a Violent Nature. Uh, <laughs> ah, like, I, I, I know I, I made the comparison to fucking, <laughs> uh, to, you know, uh, to, you know, the popular horror franchise uh, before, because it was the only thing I could roughly draw a comparison for when describing this one. Uh, See, we're both making weird horror comparisons. If anything, I think mine is more appropriate. <laughs> You wouldn't know because it's a, it's a newer movie, but uh, Sean, eventually you'll check out In a Violent Nature. You'll see what I mean. Um, a lot of people really hate that movie because it's so slow. Uh, uh, but I vibed with it. And I vibed with the first episode. Uh, episodes two and three, uh, they're bad episodes. Okay. They're bad episodes. They're trash. We, instead of having a very deliberate, slow pace um, that's like forceful in how slow it is, um, we, we just get a very normal slice of life that's badly written. It's just not, 
it, great. And uh, it's there's weird story moments that I just don't think work at all. And uh, now is now's a, I suppose a good time to introduce the characters because I, I was initially worried um, that we had a great first episode, real shit second and third that had me concerned. Uh, our, our characters, we have Hodoru. Hoda, I, I don't know. I don't know where the emphasis goes on that, son of a bitch. <laughs> Hotaru? Yeah, there you go. Hotaru. Uh, we got Hotaru, who's the new girl, right? And she's not much of anything, <laughs> but she's, she's, she's kind of bland bitch protagonist. Not the worst thing in this genre, uh, but not particularly compelling. Um, then we, we have uh, Koma. Koma is the oldest girl. At, at like the school she is the she's very short though see her thing is that she's short so that about summarizes her character you know the older one but she's smaller than others oh man so she's kind of insecure about that and the other characters make fun of it you've seen an anime you know this character all right here's a scene that hasn't happened but i i will give sean my life savings of one dollar yeah i was about to say if, like that's not exactly a big if, bet my guy if this scene does not take place, or scene like it, all right? Uh, you got Koma, and oh, she's real small, even though she's the oldest. There's going to be a scene where Koma, for some fucking reason, uh, notices that another girl has bigger boobs and is going to feel self-conscious about it. And they'll have a, a, just, uh, they'll make it too big of the episode, and it'll be too big of a scene. Um, and they'll make a moment out of it for no fucking reason. That scene is going to exist. I, one dollar on it. That's a lot of money for me, okay? <laughs> so, Sean, yeah. can you tell me that that scene, or scene like it, can you can you tell me with confidence that that scene doesn't exist? I've only watched the first season, so. Yes, there's more than one season, if that's why you're, why you're stunned in the silence. Yes, there's lots of seasons of this. All right, well, weebs, let us know if, if there's a scene like that that exists, then I am triumphant, because of course, because Koma is just a real bad character. Like, we already have our bland bitch protagonist. We don't need another bland bitch cliche. It's, it, she just doesn't add a lot. Um, both of these characters, their dialogue is kind of mediocre and trash. Uh, then we have Natsumi. Uh, she is Koma's sister, and she doesn't like to work. She's a bit of a slacker, a bit of a rebel. Um, I, I think her character's more interesting. Um, her writing is still not great, but she at least has character. So she she gets a pass, but occasional side eyes for her dialogue. Um, and then we get to the only character that they know how to write. <laughs> the only one who is consistently charming and funny uh, and entertaining on the screen. And that's Ren, the, the youngest of the lot. Because Ren has moments of like dry humor, um, occasional just like random cutting words coming from this young child while also having a lot of genuine, like, little kid tendencies just in how, how how confidently they live throughout the world. And they'll just say random shit, but with such confidence about it, where you're like, well, I, I you know what? I guess so. I guess that's just the case. Um, it's great. She's great. Uh, unfortunately, episode four, basically all about her. <laughs> Episode four, basically all about her, and I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's not a bad show. It just has some pretty bland characters and not good dialogue or scripts with them. Uh, but it has one good character, one good character that is genuinely entertaining. Um, and so yeah, Ren does a lot of legwork. Episode four is all about her meeting a new friend, and they have some fun moments together. And then that friend leaves because uh like family emergency and they were only there for summer and they have they have the delightful audacity to like when ren is told hey your friend's gone um they do an over 30 second long visual of just ren's face processing processing how to feel it's genuinely over 30 seconds and it's not like her face is going on a journey it's just this deadpan stoic face and then eventually, after 30 seconds, begins crying. Um, it's such a crazy move that I admire it. <laughs> uh, long story short, I, I don't know whether I like this show or not. Um, it, it feels like the show is good with restraint, either when it really forces 
the chill atmosphere, right? Which has only really happened in the first episode, uh, to that degree, at least. Um, or when it focuses on Ren, when it is just a normal slice of life with the other girls, I really do not give a shit. It's, their dialogue is kind of cringe. It's not well done. Um, the characters are uninteresting for the most part. Ren is great. Natsumi is fine. The other two are trash. No, no, that, that, no comment on the one male student who it doesn't have any speaking lines whatsoever, so much so that he doesn't have a listed voice actor either. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, I mean, he's just a prop. Yeah. Uh, he's <laughs> just he's just a prop and one I don't really under because they don't even use they haven't used him meaningfully for jokes, except like once briefly as like, oh, look, he's a scarecrow. But the joke wasn't even him. It was just like Natsumi making a shitty scarecrow and then being disappointed. It wasn't great. Like he hasn't been involved in much of at all of the humor so i don't know why he's there he doesn't like because you could be a sort of like silent straight man which could be fun uh, they're just not it's just, he's nothing he's nothing for the most part um but also uh, you know that sean that that brings up something oh cute girls doing cute things is a huge genre all right yeah yeah but why are men only allowed to be wholesome in solely over-the-top comedy anime doesn't seem right. Doesn't seem fair, Sean. <laughs> uh, are you about to start fighting for men's rights on our podcast now, Rem? Uh, I don't think it's necessarily a men's rights issue. I just think that uh, there should be greater diversity in stories told. I don't think that's a controversial position. Uh, g- give me a, a bunch of just like uh, creative young dudes who are, are you know, a wholesome group with one another and, and just like plucky underdogs doing cool shit. Y- like, you just, want just, a cute boys doing that. cute things genre is what you're saying. Yeah, I think there should be more of that. All right. Um, I, I, you know, just because I, I don't believe in these gender essentialist lines that are drawn. And so I, I don't think that cute girls doing cute things is the only way to, to go about it. All right. I don't I don't think it is. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll try and keep an eye out for something that fits that genre for you and we'll watch it. Uh, and hopefully it goes over well. But I'm I'm going to be honest, I'm having a hard time thinking of something off the top of my head. Uh, that See, that's that. the problem. Because uh, most of most of the like silly boys doing silly things are comedy shows. So but, and that's exactly my point. And, and like to a certain extent, it's like cute girls doing cute things. It, it tends to be comedy, but in a very different way. Right. Very different kinds of comedy. Uh, but but yeah, so th- those are my overall thoughts uh, about it. I, I like when they focus on the atmosphere of this show, which is fun. It is weird that they have an extremely decked out candy store when there's literally five kids who live there. Uh, <laughs> like only five kids. The most decked out candy store uh, you've ever seen in a rural rural town. Well, I mean, there's not Kinda much wild. to do in rural towns, so you gotta you gotta maximize. <laughs> <It's a> just <laughs> you gotta candy. You gotta maximize where you can, you know. God, the the candy store and the dentist are the only two businesses doing astoundingly well besides farming yeah. in that town. Well, hey, you know who knows uh, the exact history of the town? Maybe back in the day there were a lot more kids and such. Uh, it's just you know uh, these days in our modern world, uh, our modern world of 2013. Uh, it's not as, uh, not as prevalent, uh, but hey, you know, it, it's a legacy candy store. I remember store. the good old days when kids would horf endless candy, get so many fucking cavities. Now these newfangled kids with their dental hygiene. Jesus, Ram, I didn't realize you had, uh, were so serious about this, uh, this topic. I'm just saying, all right, Wonka was canceled by the woke dental hygiene mob, and... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I don't think that's why Wonka was cancelled, if I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> you think it was the laundry list of other reasons? Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like I feel like there's going to be things that come up first and foremost in that list before uh, before the woke mob, you know? Like, <laughs> the, like, child endangerment is like, you know, the softball answer there. It's pretty there. up there. Yeah, yeah. Like, it, <laughs> like, if we want to get into specifics of... You, you, the, you, you got worker exploitation and or slavery, depending on how you want to parse it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got definitely discrimination. There's definitely a lot of that going oh, yeah, on. Undeniable. Uh, like, you know, uh, genuinely, I think murder. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I can't prove yeah. it, but... Well, probably probably like negligent homicide. Hey, man, 
you know, at the very least, a rose by any other name uh, <laughs> is still murder. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like Wonka. Wonka's getting canceled for a lot of reasons. <laughs> Entrusting a global operation to a child like that doesn't seem like a great move either. If I'm honest, uh, you know, there's oh, there, there's lots of things we can cancel Wonka over. I feel like woke dentists are probably at the bottom of the list. <laughs> and for those who want to bring up the fucking Johnny Depp one, don't you fucking dare! <laughs> don't you fucking dare! <laughs> yes, I know they made his father a dentist in there because they needed to give him a backstory. Why did they need to do that? Fuck if I know. <laughs> what the hell? What the hell? What, have you never seen the fucking Charlie and the Chocolate Factory with Johnny Depp as Willy Wonka? I don't know. Maybe I have. Look, uh, man, just... it's not good. I'll tell you that. Is, is that the same lore in the Tilla- Timothy Chalamet Wonka? I know nothing about that one. Yeah, neither do I, quite frankly. Uh, <laughs> nor do I th- Nor do I really care to. One second. Uh, we're, we're, we're checking Lonka- Wonka lore now, huh? Yeah, I gotta, I gotta check Wonka lore. It, pulling up Wonkapedia. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm on Wonkopedia. <laughs> <laughs> on Wonkopedia, I'm learning all about the Wonka movie and what I might be missing. They're, okay, they introduce hover chocks. If you want the war crime specifically, you have to go to Wonka Leaks, though. <laughs> um, let's see, blah, blah, blah. He was working, he was working. Uh, pretty plain, tragic backstory. Um... Wonka doesn't need a backstory. <laughs> he caught an Oompa Loompa thief at a separate chocolate factory. What the fuck? <laughs> what the hell? I mean, I don't know if that's better or worse than what they did in the Charlie Factory one, which is abducting an entire tribe of Oompa Loompas to work in the factory. And somehow Wonka is gets in legal trouble, but as soon as he opens up a chocolate store, he's no longer able to be arrested. <laughs> What in the... <laughs> there's there's generally the sentence on this page. Unable to arrest him now that he has a legitimate shop, the cartel turns to Shrubin, who sabotages Wonka's chocolate with Yeti sweat. What the fuck did I just read? What's going on? Am I... I... Wait, what? Okay, so, like, the Johnny Depp one was a fucking fever dream. I remember that. How does that sentence make the most recent one sound like even more of a fever dream? Why is there a chocolate cartel? <laughs> And where the fuck do you get Yeti sweat from? Um, eventually, Wonka and Noodle are able to expose the cartel's misdeeds. Who the fuck is Noodle? <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck is Noodle? <laughs> <laughs> um, Noodle is a, an orphan, I guess. Is it the, the orphan or the Oompa Loompa? Wait, which is it? It's, it's the orphan. The Oompa Loompa was uh, lofty. Well, hey, that's the first time they've given a Noompa Loompa an actual name, so that's something. Oh, wait, but, um... <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> All right, obviously, spoilers for Wonka for anybody who's, who's stumbled here and is like, oh, fuck, my Wonka lore. <laughs> Apparently, towards the end of the movie, at some point, Wonka has been given uh, his mother's last chocolate bar. All right? At some point, that happened. And when he unwraps it, there's a message that reads, the secret is, it's not the chocolate that matters, but the people you share it with. <laughs> I, hmm. I assume his mom is dead. Those are shit, like, lasting words. Like, hey, the people in your life matter. Chocolate doesn't. But also, have fun with your chocolate empire as you live to become a sad recluse of a man. <laughs> yeah, that eventually learns to love again and entrusts uh, his dreams and futures to a child. Like, yeah. I, I guess I, I always assumed that, like, to make a Wonka movie, you'd have to be a little bit more, like, ironic and tongue-in-cheek because, you know, it's fucking Wonka. But no, it seems like they really just went as earnest and sentimental and cliche as possible. Just endless platitudes. That seems incorrect. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> that doesn't seem like the kind of thing I'd want to experience in a Wonka movie. So wait, it's a prequel? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, of course it's a prequel. Uh, he also, uh, Wonka reunites Noodle with uh, with her mother. So, Noodle, a sad little orphan, but through the power of chocolate and friendship, finds a mom. So any orphans out there, just know, if you buy, if, if you buy enough chocolate, all right, then your mom will come back and love you. That's the moral. That's the moral of the story. That's what we've learned. So we were talking about Nanan Biori, weren't we? 
Oh, uh, probably. <laughs> Until we got on the Wonka tangent. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm never, look, man, like, like, I feel like this is an Oreo situation with Willy Wonka. <laughs> yeah. They did good, like, the first time with the movie. Uh, and they keep trying to do more, but they're like, hey, dude, we're done. You're good. You, you made one of the, one of the movies of all time. Like, you're, <laughs> we're, we're done here. We don't need to make any more. They're like, but what if we did make more? Uh, and it's gotten worse every single time. So I don't, I don't know. Like, look, when, when you're, when one of the adaptations is Willy Wonka with just Tom and Jerry ha- that happen to be there, then I don't know, <laughs> I don't know why you keep doing what you do. And yes, Remington, yeah, I, that's a real one. That is a real thing. I guess thing. I, I just feel like that there's not a ton of like meat on the bone that wasn't just explored through through like Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Like it just Yeah, like again, we don't need to talk about Wonka's backstory. Like he's a weird dude who got popular from chocolate and has an entire well, and, and it's like I feel like the backstory for a character like Willy Wonka, you want you want his past to be a mystery. You're like, oh this eccentric fucking freak, dude. What the hell? Yeah, no, that ain't it. Uh but hey Ram, if you had to guess, what do you think the mouse score for non Biori is? Um Oh, probably pretty high. Probably like, um, oh man, it has so many seasons. Uh, seven point, no, yeah, seven point nine eight. That your final answer? Sure, why not? All right. Well, Remington, uh, the first season of Nun on Biori, uh, has a whopping 178,000 ratings since it first aired in 2013. Good God. Uh, yep. Uh, and it's sitting nice and pretty with a uh, score of 7.94. Oh, very close, very close. Very close, very close. It's a very beloved show. And yeah, I mean, everybody's favorite character, you know, is Ren. It's genuinely the only one with consistently good dialogue and jokes. But hey, uh, enough people enjoy the series that it got a sequel and then a, a sequel season, so three full seasons, and then some like little standalone OVAs and movies. It's a very popular little franchise. And you don't care. I understand. It's okay. I'm just distra- I look, man, I'm I'm in the Wonka rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> Get off of Wonkapedia. We're trying to end the podcast. There's a Wonka movie subreddit where it's mostly just people horny. For Timothy Chalamet in a dapper suit, uh, it it just it's just a Tumblr sexy boy. That's just all it is. Yeah, like you're that's not all you're that's not going horny on here for Wonka. You're horny for Timothy Chalamet. Like that that's a big difference, gang. Like you see me, I'm horny for Wonka. OG Wonka. All right, Gene Wilder. Yeah, God, I would fuck Gene Wilder Wonka any day. Of the week. I mean, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh. Uh, oh. I. I yeah. I've heard he's he has quite the everlasting gobstopper. Oh you know my I mean. Christ! No. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> Rem, stay away from his fizzy lifting drink. <laughs> oh, 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 no, no drink necessary. I'm lifting on my own. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna wrap them up in all that lickable wallpaper. I. I need to end the podcast. Oh, no, we can't. We can't. No, this isn't good. Um, any chance you want to watch any. <laughs> More non non Biori sometime. Oh <laughs> uh, no, but if you ever want to watch the original, the original Wonka, then I'm dead. God, you're the reason they made a porn parody of that franchise. What the hell? <laughs> okay, and with that, thank you all so much for tuning in. We love and appreciate you very much. Uh, if you enjoyed Remington, uh, you know, uh, going to the dark side of the Wonkaverse, I suppose then please head on over to wherever you get your podcasts and leave us a review. They mean the world to us, and we do read every single one. And if that is still not enough for you, uh, you can head on over to twitch.tv slash anime out of context, where myself, Dylan, and Remington occasionally play video games very poorly. I've been playing a lot of Elden Ring lately. I can't stop. Someone send help. 
And if that is still not enough for you, you can head on over to patreon.com slash anime out of context where you can access all kinds of lovely bonus material, including having the opportunity to be thanked live on the podcast. So, Rem, who are we thanking this week? Oh, uh, you know, my boy Gene, just gotta <laughs> shout him out. Quit wilding and over the man uh, and get started with the Patreon uh, reads. Oh, right, of course, of course. As always, we'd like to send our regards to all of our bland big protagonists as well as our magical girls who we really appreciate. But moving on, we get to our yandere waifus who are letting us drown in the chocolate river. And on that list, we have Xanax, Yandere Neko, Wolfire56, Where's Our DBZ Review, You Ginger Fuck, When's the Bible Out of Context on Lot and His Daughters, Wes Kane, Welcome to Anime in Full and Complete Context, the show where we at AOC are proud members of the SOS Brigade, watching Requiem for Spoonman at 0.5 speed, Ooh Woo, Who's My Nerdy Little Baby, Ooh Woo, Utah Number 1, Unhinged Frax, Totally Fun Hearing You Mess the Name Up, Will Change, uh, see, now I don't know what, what what your previous name was that I was messing up. I don't I don't know what it was. Uh, Titan CNH. The will of the people is that we should be able to pressure Sean into doing shows he's putting off. The Susanator, the Flying Spaghetti Monster. The Danish Viking will conquer the world with Uranor Zoro as my navigator. The Capybara discovered chocolate baileys. Turban, Super Zoo, Stacy's mom. Sean wants to give Spoon Man a thank and yank. Sean, show Rem Kagiyasama dubbed, and my life is yours. Sean's weekly Judy Hopps jar update. There is no update. Sean managed to touch grass this week. Sean, say this. I'm your little weep chip. Sean ruined my happy sugar life when he said he will finally reveal his true colors on September 2nd, 2024. I don't know what Sean that can, means. I, I, I don't know either. Sean can do 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 these nuts. Seraphim the shark plushie. Segoy to Kai, that's what she said. Ross Palmer, Rhiannon Williams. Rem, Remington uses the deer crackers of liberation. Remington is right. Rem uses the drums of liberation to free all weebs from bad anime. Rem hate rock bottom is still on top of Sean. Rem doesn't completely hate my favorite shows. Regulatrion. Pro tips out of context. The pellet with the poisons and the flagon with the dragon. The vessel with the pestle has the brew that is true. Professor Fox. Oni Chi Chi 10 out of 10 family show. No Sean. Insert coin doesn't mean inserting in. Nay. Next week, the Shonen Flop guys see if they can double penetrate my thick, ju- juicy big hole. <laughs> My Christ, I hope you're not subscribed to them. I really hope Surely you're not. Surely they are. Surely this is a double feature for both. Of it. So because, you know, referencing the show Flop Guys, referencing Big Hole, so that way it works both ways. Like I, I just I just feel bad because it feels like they were one of ours first. You know, they have they have the show of Flop Guys have told us that very often they end up reading horny bullshit that is primarily directed towards us. But they also support flop points, which you should. Uh, and it, it, that's that's just a hilarious little crossover. And we've, uh, we've apologized on several occasions. <laughs> <laughs> Nickerdancer 1415. My favorite dinosaur is the Triceratops. Misuka was playing anime trope bingo, but every show this season keeps hitting the sister fucking square. Mikaika 7 Herto. Making fake mile count so I can rate Force Fairy 5 10 out of 10. Macaroni Uchiha. Lucky Star is the king of Moe. Link Joe Girl. Lenerd 98. Cassidy. Jumping on the non non Viori train, well, you're welcome. Jax, j I'm the original guy that made you say cunt every week, the other guy's just a pretender. I'll never get more Ace of the Diamond, now I cry. I can't believe I made an account for this. I am the very model of a major, modern major general. I've information vegetable, edible, edible. I have the kings of Igwin. All right, uh, that was fucking horrendous. Uh, hey, Sean, I'm doing, what is your D&D class? Uh, hey, Sean, want some fuck? Hey, guys, your belly button is connected to your bladder, so... Parisian, Parisian Dick Laser has merit. Hattori Seiki, A Tracer 01, Government Drone, Glenn Michael Dolan, Ginger Weeb, Fern the Guy Learning Guitar by Watching Anime. Farmer Weeb wants to congratulate Rem for the pleasant week because only bottoms would overcompensate and punish you this week. Uh, oh, I, you know, I mean, he's, he's, it, it, no. Uh, fan time. <laughs> hey, look, sometimes gambles don't pay off. You, it's okay for me to have a win every once in a while. <laughs> Erica McCorkle, Diana Madrid, Derpixian Worshipper, Daniel Riot, Daddy Rum, tell me a bedtime story. Chivalry of a Failed Knight is my favorite anime. Cheese Monkey, Chair the God, Sports Rem in the Dark Times, Cat Girls are Best Girls, so give me them cute little paws. Brock Hard for G Dudes, that's right, he took the hedgehog fucking Quilly dick out. Blake Star, Bento Kato. Been a while since I've changed my name on here, but I got third four point oh. Can't believe it. I'm also changing my major from funeral. Batman couldn't hate fuck that information out of me. Anime Atabu Konketsu uh, wa Dasuki Desu. And every day that Raven comes to visit. Amazing Muffin. AJ Tunnels. Aisha Gachi. A Moe piece of trash. A little bit of spoon under my pillow for the spoon man. And now we move on to the boy wizard tier. What are they gonna get this week, Sean? <sighs> Man, 
Let me tell you, Ram, I've been thinking about it for like the last 15 minutes when I wasn't thinking about Wonka stuff. <laughs> and unfortunately, the only thing I can come up with is Wonka stuff. So, uh, what they're, they're gonna get, they're gonna get, <laughs> they're going to get a, a popular American candy. Lovely. Week four asking for a darling in the Franks review. Yeah, and for those who are like, but Wonka's British, uh, shut the fuck up, it's fine. <laughs> Don't worry about He's it. He's American in our hearts. Yeah, like, look, if you've ever had, like, Wonka candy, that shit's American. <laughs> like, there's, <laughs> there's, there's, no, there's no shot it's not, you know? Uh, sorry, uh, hit me with the name one more time. Week four, asking for a darling in the Franks review. Airheads. Umbersight. Breath savers. <laughs> okay, that mouse girl. Uh, Buckeye. The candy, not the, uh, not the, the pastry. Tale stories to be continued, Nep. Uh, Butterfinger. Spoonman the Aristocrat. C. Howard's Violet Candies. Now that sounds like a British one. <laughs> Silent Secondary. Okay, this list is bubkiss. Candy apple is not, is there a candy apple? No, no, it is just like the, the candied apple. Okay, yeah, sure, fine, why not? Cool, there you go. Sean, you've been nice to Rem lately, breaking with a double SAO again. In what world has he been over generous to me lately? <laughs> I think by the, I think the translation there is I haven't been especially heinous to you lately. I don't know, man. <laughs> like, uh, but they can have a circus peanut. Serial killer Isekai is a manga that deserves an anime. There's apparently a confectionery that's just called Divinity. <laughs> oh, Scourge, best 20 bucks spent, Uh, Eclipse, like the gum. Sammy K is beautifying enough doggos to stop her Patreon membership. Okay, this, li- this list is... Is wild. Let me tell you. Edible underwear is the next thing, which I can understand oh. being an American thing. Uh, but, you know. Ah, damn. Rias. Uh, extra, the gum. Roscop. Good and plenty. Nightshade Blade wants to gush over magical girls. Uh, great bite. Monogatari is everything you ever said you want in an anime. This week has the worst CGI ever, but it fits and becomes genius. Uh, Hershey's Kisses. Mike. Hershey's Bar. Miguel Delion. Uh, Jelly Beans. I summon the ultimate Exodia. Jolly Ranchers. I don't think you heard me. I said blimey. Uh, Jure Fruit Rolls. Fate Zero when it's great for edginess. Okay, this just sounds like a, a euphemism. Uh, Kentucky Cream Candy. <laughs> you ready to get Kentucky creamed, boy? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think you should say it with that accent. I really don't. I feel like, I feel like that's just going to get us in trouble. Hey again. there. It's hey good. there, Wonka. <laughs> you want my Kentucky cream candy? <laughs> Christ almighty. Uh, Crosskirt. Lemon drop. Crimson Reapers just because of the sides. Lifesavers. Carver 271. Mike and Ike. Bloodsell asks, can you imagine an imaginary menagerie manager imagining, ma- imagining a menagerie manager? Fuck. I, I'm usually so good on that one, but I fucked it. Uh, they can have a Milky Way. Beethoven 1201. Mr. Goodbar. Anime mashup of the week, a place further than next door. I don't, I disagree that this is a candy, but sure, moon pie. Animated Z. Uh, nerds. All Father ponders about seeing niche micro-internet celebrities at a local convention in October. Ooh, well, hey, uh, bad news about that convention in October. Uh, there's a good chance that it might be dead, actually. Oh, shit! (laughs) Yeah, yeah. This is the first time hearing that. Yeah, 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 I only recently heard of it as well. Like, there's a, there's a lot of, uh, uh, unfortunate things going on behind the scenes, apparently. Uh, so either... So there, it's like 50-50 whether or not it actually happens this year. So we'll see. Well. Uh, so, hey, don't buy that ticket yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can have penguin mints, apparently, is a thing. Ah, but of course. Now we move on to the inappropriate Joey Wheeler tier. Where on this tier, uh, you see, here's, here's, here's the thing, Sean. Um, <laughs> I was also... Struggling. <laughs> Gonna do it Wonka coded. Yeah. Hey, look, man. Great minds and whatnot. Uh so Sean will give you a kind of candy, and I will tell you the crazy side effects that it can have. Uh on that list we got until Sean shows Nan Nan Bayori to Rem, I will upgrade one Patreon account to Joey Wheeler tier each week. Well, there you go, finally. Yeah, hey, there you go. Uh now you can stop making us feel guilty. Uh <laughs> Your, uh, uh, your, your first candy, because I'm sure you're going to get lots, is going to be, uh, nerds. Nice and simple. Uh, and the side effect is that when the nerds touch saliva, they begin, uh, growing and transforming into real nerds. 
That's horrifying. <laughs> it is. <laughs> that, it really, really is. That is the stuff of fucking nightmares. Don't swallow them too quick. Oh, Next, God. we got Rowdyo. Uh, you're going to get, you know, keep it simple. You're going to get a lovely white chocolate bar. Uh, and uh, that white chocolate bar, uh, it actually has, uh, it, it's a white out chocolate bar that can erase reality or taste delicious. Next we got Papa Sean, you make me arch my back. Do you like the way I flick my tongue? No jeans. Take them off. My God. <laughs> uh, fucking, you get cornflakes. <laughs> <laughs> and if you uh, understand why, then, then good on you. Uh, but those cornflakes, uh, you'll, they make it so you'll always have a bowl at hand, and that bowl is Sean Rollins. I beg your pardon. <laughs> next we, next we got, oh look, Ray Cooper Go now is for Joey Wheeler to your account, so hopefully Sean feels guilty and shows not not Bayori. Hey, great news. <laughs> great fucking news. Okay, uh, Here we are. you're going to get, uh, f like, uh, those fun dip powders, you know? The thing that are just designed to make a mess. And... Uh, the fun dip is actually held in a pocket dimension uh, of where everything is fun dip. So you get as much fun dip as you want, but don't fall into the fun dip dimension. Next up, we got my third Patreon account. It's now upgraded to Joey Wheeler for Nan Nan Bayori. Okay, uh, you get to have a toffee. Toffee. Just toffee. <laughs> uh, but that toffee is able to magically transform into becoming a more interesting candy. <laughs> 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 Next up, we got Latinos or MGS Swede loves the Otakon uh, Mr. Otaku convention is part of this podcast. Uh, you can have uh, a peanut butter cup. And inside that peanut butter cup is not just peanut butter, but another peanut butter cup. And it goes chocolate, peanut butter, chocolate, peanut butter, actually to infinity. It's <laughs> mathematically impossible, or so they said. I feel like that's I something that Reese's would have tried. <laughs> <laughs> I am a regulation listener that used to listen to Face Jam, but now listen to 100% Eat, Red Kumiko. Okay. Uh, all right. You get to have um, lollipop. Uh, and, and this lollipop, it actually pops. It's a bomb. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> I know. It's crazy. Here is my second account. I'm upgrading to Joey Wheeler until Nan Nan Bayori gets reviewed, Red Kumiko. Okay, all right. I think this is the last one. Uh, of the Kumikos, at least. Uh, I, I hope. Uh, you're going to get a, for your final candy, a... God, what's a candy? Uh, <laughs> I'm all candied out. Uh, you can have a, sure, like a, a crispy rice bar. Like, you know, like a crunch, but, you know, non-brand specific so that we don't mention Nestle. And uh, with, with this uh, rice bar... Uh, it's 100% non-vegan. Wait a minute. <laughs> there is not a single part of it Wait that is minute. not made of meat, but you wouldn't be able to tell. Wait, how, what, how, who? You heard of impossible meat. This is impossible. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> From the makers of I can't believe it's not butter. <laughs> I can't believe that very much is meat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for doing it again. If you want to reach out for a comment, question, feedback, or recommendation, you can tweet us at AnimeConPod on Twitter or send an email over onto AnimeOutOfContext at gmail.com. Once again, guys, thank you all so much for tuning in. We love and appreciate you very, very much. And as always, don't fuck your sister. Do-do-do-do. Do-do-do-do.